uh, not just hospitals or people in charge of hospitals or surgeons, but even the general public is starting to realize the importance of anesthetics, not just in the OT, but also for various procedures outside the operation theater. To give you an example, even things like upper jaw endoscopies or colonoscopies or MRIs or CT scans. Hi guys, and today we have a very special guest, Dr. Arjun, an MD in anesthesiology from Kasturba Medical College, Manipal. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Shivam. It's my pleasure. I've seen a lot of your videos and it's an honor to be a part of your channel. Thank you and today we will talk about the scope of anesthesiology. So let's begin. Firstly, like what are the degrees which can be pursued in India as well as abroad for anesthesiology post MBBS? So starting with India, post MBBS you can do your basic degrees which are your diploma or your DNB or your MD in anesthesiology which I am presently pursuing. Post that of course you can do a super specialization which is a DM degree in various super specialities of anesthesiology like neuroanesthesia and cardiac anesthesia or critical care. Abroad, similarly, you can do fellowships or diplomas. So these are the various branches that you can do after MBBS when it comes to anesthesiology. Okay. And in your opinion, what do you think? Like which colleges are the best for pursuing this? So I'm presently doing my MD anesthesiology from Kasturba Medical College, which is one of the best institutes in the country when it comes to the anesthesia department. It's got uh, names which are renowned all over the country, uh, you know, our faculty who works here. Uh, and uh, mostly the central institutes are supposed to be the best. Uh, so your AIMS, PGI, Chandigarh. Uh, JIPMER, these are uh, considered to be some of the best institutes. Uh, then you have uh, a lot of colleges in Delhi and also down south which are uh, which are very well renowned. Especially some of the colleges in Delhi are supposed to be um, you know amongst the top colleges in anesthesiology. Again there will be different people with different opinions regarding this. I feel that I am very happy with the education and training that my college is providing me. But uh, yes the central institutes from what people say are supposed to be the best. Okay. And what is the scope of anesthesiology in terms of the job profile in India? So once you finish your anesthesiology, you can join as a consultant either in a teaching hospital or you can join in a corporate setup. So in a teaching hospital, usually your work hours will be fixed where you will be starting at 8 or 9 in the morning and your elective procedures will usually be done by let's say 3 or 4 o'clock. After that, you might be on emergency duty in the initial parts of your career. Uh, if you're working in corporate, of course, the work hours are less flexible and they're often uh, more extensive. So that again dif uh, differs from institute uh, to institute. So that is the basic job profile. But um, what most anesthesiologists in today's world are doing is that they're taking a job up in a corporate setup or in an academic institute. And then once they're done with that, they're doing freelancing. Freelancing in simple terms is when you are not associated with a specific hospital. So you team up with a surgeon and on a surgical uh, team and you go and help a surgeon uh, perform the surgery in an external hospital with which you are not presently affiliated. So that's what freelancing means, which a lot of anesthetists are doing, uh, you know, once their regular uh, duty gets over. Okay. And what is the approximate range of salary for the job profiles like you mentioned in India as well as abroad? Uh, so there is this misconception that anesthetists don't get paid as well as the other branches. That is not true. Uh, if anything, you can say that a successful anesthetist probably makes a little bit less money than a successful surgeon when it comes to freelancing because we will get a lesser cut of the money that the patient will be paying for their entire uh, surgical experience. But once you finish your MD anesthesiology, you will be earning a decent amount, which is not discernibly less than any of the other branches. So you will start earning more earlier in anesthesiology than you do with other streams. The only issue probably would be that there would not be as noticeable a hike in the amount you're earning uh, with progression in your job as there might be with other streams. So if again it depends on where you're settling so if you're looking to work in a tier one city like personally i want to continue working in kolkata after this so again the amount you'll be earning there will be less as compared to a tier two city so if you're okay with going and settling in a tier two city you will easily make one and a half to two lakhs right after your uh, mbbs if you are if you want to work in a tier one city and you want the lifestyle of a tier one city you will make 
less money you will make probably 1 to 1.2 lakhs again this is just uh, the hospital you are affiliated with if you are working in a teaching hospital you will earn less money if you are working in a corporate setup you will have longer work hours but you will earn more money and then freelancing is the bonus where you can make whatever you possibly can outside of this so that's the bonus so that can't really be included in any of this so if you're running a booming freelance business where you are you know working uh 12 hours extra every day you could be easily making four to five lakhs a month right after your uh, md okay and uh, what is in your opinion the market demand the present as well as the future market demand of an anesthesiologist which you can predict so shivam anesthesia has grown and expanded a lot over the last 10 to 20 years probably more than any other stream and the market demand of anesthesia is also ever expanding because slowly not just hospitals or uh, people in charge of hospitals or surgeons but even the general public is starting to realize the importance of anesthetics not just in the ot but also for various procedures outside the operation theater to give you an example even things like upper jaw endoscopies or colonoscopies or mris or ct scans a lot of these uh, uh, procedures are done under the supervision of an anesthetist now so the market demand is ever growing and i don't see it uh, dropping any time in the next 10 to 20 years okay so that was a wonderful conversation with dr arjun a lot of informative talks in this video i'll cut this video short here moving on to the next one thank you dr arjun thank you shiva my pleasure